Hey guys, thanks for following Mongo Optics. Today we are going to demonstrate how to prep a fiber cable. It's one of the commonly asked questions, so we figured we'd demonstrate it for you today. Alright, so to start, obviously step one is to get the fiber cable into the trailer. After that, and this is based on the fact that we're just training, usually you want eight to nine feet of cable, but today we're just going to use about, I don't know, that's like six and a half feet. So, first thing I always do is I make my mark where the base of your prep is going to be. So you just mark it, nothing that will harm the cable, just, uh, just a mark for reference. So then this is what I do, you can either use your knife or your cable cutters. I use cable cutters but it's based on feel. So you choose what you want to do. If you're an experienced fiber tech, cable cutters are obviously faster. And so we just start here at the base. And like I said, it's based on feel. And you'll feel it when you get to that first sheath. Okay. So I made my cut there. I come down to the end. I give it like a foot. Do the same thing. And here's one of the, another way to make the cut, to peel off the outer jacket is with a knife, kind of the old school way. But they made this fancy tool, the Ripley tool. It's basically the saving grace of fiber splicing. So you just take your blade down. Again, another thing based on feel. Get your blade in place. And you rip it. One thing you need to listen for is the zip sound. That's how you know you're getting down to that first sheath. So you do the same on the opposite side. Again, based on feel and sound, obviously. You can take your fiber knife, whatever you want to call it. Let's see. And peel up. At that point, you can take the outer jacket and peel it back by hand. Okay, you do the same thing with the opposite side. Just enough to get a grip and pull back. And you're down to the first sheath, aluminum armor. That's what it looks like if you don't know what it looks like. So then same thing here, you're just peeling this first. aluminum armor off and so in this case we're dealing with double armored cable so basically we're gonna go through all those steps one more time <laughs> so this is your rip cord your Kevlar rip cord one of the main things you need to focus on is pulling with the cable not out not inside, not outside, but with the cable. You pull it to the base, your prep base right here. I went a little past there, that's okay. Um, but really try and get to the base where your base score is there. Always leave about a foot of your rip cord for future steps. So then we go down here to the base and peel just like we did up top. That's where these come into play sometimes. These are your flush cuts. 
make a little snip through the armor and just peel back. Sometimes it gets pretty tough. So if you're curious on what it looks like inside the jacket and the armor, there you go. We got kind of lucky. Some They're all different. So this one wasn't filled with glue, so we were able just to peel this off in one piece. Let's give that to you. So then we do the same thing. Like I said, this is double armor. So you make your score at the base. Come to the top of the cable, do the same thing, about a foot back. Again, based on feel, if you're new, I would not recommend that. Take your Ripley, adjust your blade. This, you gotta be extra careful because past this armor is the buffer tube. So you really got to be careful on what you feel and what you hear. So that's perfect because that's going right around the armor. That zip sound. Adjust your blade again. And just like the first sheath, first jacket, just peel it back, same on the opposite side, then you peel your armor. Again right here, it's super easy when you're pulling this off to twist the buffer, you could either kink or cut the buffer on that aluminum, so you got to be extra careful there. So then on this last layer of armor, or jacket and armor, you have two rip cords. So like I said, we got some dry cable, so I'm going to show you a way to prep it without having to use both pull strings or rip cords. Again, pull with the cable, not against it. Pull it to your base score. cut about a foot, foot and a half. Let's see. So again, like we did the first time, come down here with your fiber knife, peel the jacket. Just want to reiterate, if you notice that there's glue between the jacket and the armor, do not attempt that. Use both pull strings. So come to the base, pry up the armor just a little. That one just kind of broke, so that's good. But it's always good to have flush cuts with you. Give a little snip. Just pull out your fiber. All right, as you can see, we have that extra rip cord here. Just cut it just like we did the other one. All right, so we're just gonna call this our input. So in the Midwest, I don't know what your uh, color combinations are, but blue means input. So just for reference, we're going to put a blue zip tie. So on most of the jobs we do, 
the input is on your left side of the case. So sometimes with these that only have one pull string on the outer sheath and jacket, you got to use your utility knife and just carefully line it up where you think it's going to be. Go the opposite side and score the jacket. Another feel thing, if you're new, have your partner or whoever you're working with do this for you. And pull. That's good enough. Okay, then go to the inside cable. Actually, we use the inside, so we're just gonna cut these off. You don't need your pull strings anymore. And since this is double armor, one thing you need to do to get the bonding correct for the grounds, the grounds are for locating, you need to use your utility knife and score this outer jacket. That way the bonding clamp right here can touch both armors so everything is bonded. Okay, you take your fiber knife, pry that open just a little bit. Make sure it's nice and loose. And you'll take your seam ripper and this Kevlar water coating. You just rip it up here, pull it back. Okay. And now you get the fillers and the strength member cut down to size. So I always just separate the buffer tube so there's no confusion. And then you always want the strength member, I always cut it at about two, two and a half inches. Okay, the next step, just to clean everything up, is to take your filler tubes. I always use my flush cuts to get them as close um, to the base as I can. And you just cut them even with the base there, the prep base. Sometimes you need your snips. Okay. To me, it's important to throw away your trash as you do it because it can get pretty messy. All right. So I always pull and make sure wherever you're putting your bonding clamp that your buffer tube's on the opposite side. That way you're not nicking it with the bonding clamp. You just put your bonding clamp in place. Again, right where I scored the outer jacket so we can touch both uh, levels of the armor. Take your can wrench, tighten this down. A lot of people like to do this with a drill. I think that's super risky. So I always do it by hand, just so I know how tight I'm getting it. Okay. And just based on experience, I'm gonna cut this at about an inch and a half. Okay, so we'll put this on here. Okay, so 
Next, we tape this up. You can use whatever tape you like. We like using uh, Scotch 3M, Super 33, or 88. In this case, this was cheaper. <laughs> okay, so I always start about an inch from where I made the cut. And just go all the way up to the base of your Scotch lock. I always go around four times and then make my way down. So that is a prepped fiber cable.